Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends, get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. We want to welcome our viewers again to this uh, morning devotion, Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Today is 16th of August, 2021. And our topic for this morning devotion is Your Story Will Change. And our text will be taken from John chapter 5, reading from verse 1 to 15. But before then, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you, O God, because of the grace of waking up again and the privilege to be in your presence. We thank you for the gift of life and good health that we have enjoyed. We thank you, Father Lord, for the gift of the scriptures that you have given to us to read for our own understanding. And Father, we know for truth that the entrance of your word into our lives brings revival. Your word brings healing, which we declare this morning to all our viewers that they will receive revival and healing and your blessings in the name of Jesus. Even as we look into this theme this morning, that your story uh, will change. We declare to all our viewers as we meditate together, may their stories change for better in the name of Jesus Christ. May they experience miracles in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever, Lord, you have desired for your children this morning, we ask that, Father, we shall receive it. Thank you, Father, for everything. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. John chapter 5 from verse 1. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now, there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool which in Aramaic is called Bethsaida, which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, and the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid man replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is still. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once, the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. And so the Jewish leader said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath. The Lord forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him, Who is this fellow who told you to pick it up and walk? The man who was healed had no idea who it was, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Later, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning, or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had made him well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your story will change. Healing shrines were common throughout the ancient world. 
especially for the worship of other popular deities renowned for their healing powers. Most of these shrines require the supplicants to purify themselves at the adjoining foundation or adjoining fountain or other source of water. This passage portrays Jesus as greater than such healing sanctuaries of his day. Now, this sign completes the three miracles that show how a person is safe. The first miracle was when Jesus turned water into wine in Galilee. And that shows that salvation is through the word of God. The second is healing the nobleman's son, which shows that salvation is by faith. This third miracle demonstrates that salvation is by grace. This man was in a pitiable condition. He had been afflicted for 38 years. He was surrounded by afflicted people, which all of them, I mean all of whom illustrate the sad condition of the unsaved, imported without power. Some of them were blind. Some of them could not walk correctly. Some of them, their hands were withered. They were waiting for something to happen without hope. If these people could get into the water when the angel came, they could be healed. But they lack the power to get there. But see the grace of God at work. Beside that means house of grace or house of mercy. And this is what became for this one man. What does grace mean? It means kindness to those who are undeserving. Jesus saw a multitude of sick people, but he chose only one man and healed him. This man was no more deserving than others, but God chose him. And so this is a beautiful picture of salvation, how it ought to humble us. He said, I have chosen you, you have not chosen me. And in him, not because of our own merits, but because of his grace. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. What Christ says in chapter 5 verse 21 applies here. He quickens and give life to whom he will. We cannot explain the grace of God. But if it were not for God's grace, nobody will ever be saved. 38 years is a very long time for one to be stricken with an ailment that is being described as invalid. It's a long time to wait in the same place for one's healing. It's a long time that is capable of causing despondency and depression and even death. So in the face of all these oaths, this man kept the faith which grew his hope for this period of time. He kept on trying without success, but kept on believing that it's possible. My viewers, where you have lost hope in life, that is where God's miracle begins with you. 38 years may seem to be a long time, but this man was hopeful. When God is delayed at appointed time, he will come out in a big way. And that is why he said in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and future. Let us look at the example of Sarah and Abraham. They have lost hope of getting a child. But even at the old age, God visited them. God surprised them. And the miracle of God, as they experienced it, we could see it was at appointed time. Hannah, we saw that despite all that 
the husband was doing to make sure that she enjoyed the benefits of their relationship, Hannah was still crying, waiting for God. And at the appointed time, God met her. Ruth and Naomi uh, could have lost hope when Naomi lost her husband in a foreign land, lost her two sons, and was only left with daughter-in-laws. But we see that they kept faith in God. Today, what challenges are you passing through? Are you waiting for the blessing of womb? Remember Sarah and Hannah. Maybe it's head challenges. Imagine this man that has been invalid for 38 good years. Probably your own is promotion at work. You should remember Joseph and Mordecai. God is ready to change your story right away. This man should serve as an example to us, especially when it comes to the exercise of patience. We know in our nation today, we are known to be a nation of sharp, sharp people. We want answer right away and wait for, and, and cannot wait even seven, seven days. In fact, this, it seems to us as a kind of waste of time. In this moment, we tend to murmur, we tend to complain. Probably some of us even tend to change church and pastors as some become despondent and dispraised, losing hope even in God. But I want to let you know, what can you do to change your story, to change your situation? Number one, you must surrender yourself and situation to God. The invalid man said, I have no one to let me in when the, when the water steers. But as it, as it were, Jesus was there. And Jesus commanded him to pick up his mat and walk. Maybe at a point that you feel hopeless. Remember the hymn that says, what a friend we have in Jesus. Jesus is there and is always available for you. Number two, you must wait patiently on God when you want your story to change. Psalm 27 verse 14, it says, Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. We need to be patient. When God created the world, God can equally take a second or one, one minute or even one hour to create everything. But it took God six days, one after the other, to create the universe. So we have to be patient. We have to wait on him. Whatsoever you are looking forward to receive, when the appointed time comes, the Lord will favor you. The Lord will give it to you. Don't be in a hurry. Number three, do away with every evil influence. Do away with every evil influence. People that will not lead you to your destiny. People that will mislead you. Sometimes, some of us, when you are, wait, when you are in your waiting period, people may, may come to you. What are you still waiting for? Why don't you go there? Why don't you do that? Why don't you do this? Some may even, you know, try to push you to do a diabolical things. You must be patient. You must do away with anything that will influence you to do evil things. This man waited for 38 good years. He was not distracted. All he was aiming at, one day, God will come to his rescue. Favor will come his way. So, I pray for you, my viewers, as you wait patiently on God, as you don't associate or you don't allow evil influence to mislead you, the Lord favor will locate you in Jesus' name. Number four, you must hate your present challenging situation 
and aspire for a better place. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. We saw the story of Jabez there. Jabez prayed God to change his situation and enlarge his coast. Some of us sometimes, when maybe what you are looking for is delayed, you tend to assume that nothing will happen again. You have accepted that that will be your condition. I want to let you know that condition that is, you are seeing is permanent in your life. It's not permanent. It's just there for a while. And sooner or later, it will disappear. It may be sickness. Sometimes when you are sick, you assume, ah, this already is my sickness. I'm already used to it. Don't be used to, to, to anything, anything like that. I want to let you know that your time of change has come. A time that your story will change has come. And it is now. You must uh, rise up like Jabez and say, God, change my situation. Enlarge my coast. Number five, put your hope in God alone. Never you put your hope in human beings. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Whatsoever you are doing in life, yes, people may come around you, but no matter the number of people surround, that surrounds you, or no matter what they say to you or what they give you, never put your trust in them because they may fail you. It's only God that will never fail you. Number six, you must walk. You must walk. The Bible says we must do the work of him that sent us. Well, it is there. For the night comes when no one can walk. John 9, 4. Ruth and Naomi, why their story changed was because they pick courage to walk in Boaz's farm. There's no food for a lazy man. You can't sit in a place and say, you are waiting for God not do, without not doing anything. Rise up to do something. You are made to walk. Even Jesus Christ said, I must do the work of him that sent me. We are born to walk. We are born to succeed. And we are born to do whatsoever God desires us to do. And so from, from verses 9 to 10 of where we read, we saw that uh, the healing of this man, uh, this invalid man, stir up trouble with uh, the Sabbath police. John tells us that this healing took place on, on, on the Sabbath. But when they saw that the man, the man carrying his mat home, they comforted him and desired to know, who asked you to take up this mat on the Sabbath? Indeed, it was a law without mercy. When the man was there, nobody cares. Now they have seen rise up upon his feet. Instead of them to share in his joy, they were rather, they would rather apply the law, which I describe as a law without mercy. The heal man, from verses 11 to 13, shifted the blame from himself to Jesus. This was a man who has even received the healing, but ne never knew the healer. Some of us today, all we are concerned with, all we desire, is a miracle. It's a miracle. All you are looking for is a miracle without knowing the healer. When they were, he was confronted, who was that man that said you should pick up your mat? They asked him. So he said, it was one fellow who told me to pick up and walk. He never knew Jesus Christ. And so Jesus goes to the man and confronts him about his sin. We don't know what his sin was. Maybe it's laundry, cheating, sexual sin, whatever. We, did, we are not told. But serious sin. And Jesus commanded him to stop sinning or else what will come over him may be worse. Something worse may happen to him. So Jesus tell him the consequences of if he doesn't stop sinning. You might ask, what would have been worse than being crippled for 38 good years? 
Remember, hellfire throughout eternity. That is what Jesus, that is where Jesus was referring to. And so, you, this is a call for repentance. Both John and Jesus preach repentance for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So it is clear that repentance from sin is necessary to believe in Christ Jesus. Matthew eleven twenty to uh, Matthew twenty one thirty two. The only reason we find this shocking is that we have embraced a gospel of grace without repentance. Just pray the sinner's prayer and be forgiven. We tell people. But faith without repentance is useless. The story of the healing of this man at the pool of Bethesda is all full of grace. He didn't deserve anything. In fact, he wasn't a very good uh, man to start with. But it is all about repentance. If we try to separate grace from repentance, we have sincerely distort the gospel. But here was this man that have received the grace of God, healing and salvation. And that is why the songwriter that says, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. My viewers, your hour of glory is ahead of you. Your day of emancipation has come. Your moment of victory is now. It is time for a change. You will sing a new song. Men and women will come to celebrate with you. This is assured. Only have an encounter with Jesus Christ today. Are you ready? Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. We appreciate you, O oh God. For what you have done for this invalid man who had been suffering for 38 good years. I pray, O oh God, for those that are hearing us and listening to us. No matter their condition, no matter what they may be passing through right away, no matter the challenges that are before them, Father, may you change their story for better. May you change their situation for better. Those that are hopeless, Lord, may you grant them hope. And we pray that God, you will heal them from the sickness of sin, that they will repent and turn over to you. Thank you, Father, for everything. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com